Welcome everyone, it's Lupak here with another beginner's guide tutorial video for Albion Online. Today we're going to talk through eight essential tips for new players. Now this video aims to give you some particular pointers on various things that mean that when you're going through the early days of your Albion life and just making your way through the world, these are little tips that will help you not waste your time or be inefficient or do things that will later on impact your character in the long run. The first tip we have for you is to make sure your character always has premium activated. Premium subscription lets you advance your character much much quicker than if you didn't have it as well as giving you 20 learning points and 10,000 crafting focus per day. If you're paying real money for your premium subscription, you don't need to worry about this because it will be automatic. Uh, if you're trying to stay free to play in Albion Online, then your first month of playtime after you create your character, one of your main goals should be to make sure you have enough silver for premium next month. If you're looking for some ways to make silver on your character, you can refer to our five easy ways to make silver video in the beginner's tutorial guide series. Tip number two is always build your island at Carlion for your characters. Carlion is currently the central hub in the game for pretty much everything. It's the game gateway to the Outlands, it's central in the Royal Continent, and it's surrounded by the best resources and dungeons you'll find in the Royal Continent. So pretty much everybody, once they reach a certain level, is living out of the game. Therefore, building your island on one of the outer cities in the Royal Continent will kind of make you regret it later and wish you had it at Carlion. And if you want to move it, you will have to deconstruct your island in order to move to Carlion. You're going to be spending a lot of time here, so it makes a lot of sense to have your island here. Just as a side note though, the upcoming Merlin patch may change the economy of the outer royal cities due to the way that resources are going to be distributed to them. So this might actually change after the patch, and maybe if you're focusing on one specific resource, you will in fact want to be in the royal outer cities. But for now though, Carlion is the only place to be when it comes to your personal island. Tip number three also relates to personal islands, and this is do not build any crafting or refining stations on your personal island to use. Now this tip seems kind of counterintuitive because who wouldn't want their own personal refiner or crafting station on their island? The problem is, is currently the resource return rate for personal islands is a big fat zero. Whereas if you can craft or refine at one of the player owned plots in a city, you'll find that actually they offer a base resource return rate of 15%. Another side note is crafting stations do need feeding and repairing to keep them up and running. If you're using a crafting station in town, then the feeding and repairing is the responsibility of the owner. Your own ones on your island will need to be done by you, further increasing the cost gap when you do when you use them. Although you will have to pay a silver cost to use a public crafting station, the fact that you get 15% of your resources back when you use it will mean that the, the cost effectiveness always remains in favor of the crafter versus using their island. Tip number four is for the crafters out there. When you're making the cheaper items for leveling up, rather than sell them for a pitiful amount of silver or salvage them for a small amount of resources, remember to study those items. This will destroy the items you've crafted, but grant you tr double the fame that it costs you to actually make them. This way you can power level your crafting even quicker. And really you wouldn't have made much silver selling those items anyway. So it really helps boost you, especially in the earlier levels when you're trying to get to the next tier to stay self-sufficient. Tip number five is spend your learning points very wisely. LP or learning points are acquired over time by premium characters. You start with 350 and you gain 20 a day. They should only be spent on certain things. Uh, for a more in-depth look at learning points, you can check out the learning point video coming to the beginner's guide very soon. But for now, the rule of thumb for learning points is you should only spend them on leveling your gathering tool to the next tier up or the specialization, the outer ring of the combat line with a particular focus on artifact items before mainline items. 
Tip number six refers to the crafting focus that you gain. When you have a premium account, you're getting 10,000 crafting focus per day. And the tip is to make sure you're always spending your crafting focus. Never ever let it max out at 30K. Using crafting focus on any activity basically makes the activity more efficient. So whether you're farming, breeding animals, refining, crafting, studying, it doesn't matter. It will increase your efficiency, give you better returns or give you better resources back for doing it. And crafting focus is essentially free money. For a new character, this is especially important because you need to maximize profits in order to maintain your premium when you're new to the game. It honestly doesn't matter too much what you use the focus on. Some activities are better than others. I actually recommend re uh, focus refining rare materials to make money to start with for a character. But the main thing is you are using it and not letting it go to waste. Tip number seven is respect the red zones. A lot of people consider the red zones a little bit safer because they're not the black zone. They hear about the big, scary black zone in Albion Online. And they think, oh, it's just a red zone, so I'll be safe. I can see the PKs, you know, I'll know if anybody's coming to kill me. But really, you should never be going through the red zone with something you can't afford to lose, or unless you have a big escort and you're guaranteed safety. Some of the juiciest kills in Albion Online have come in the red zones. People who just really didn't think they were in any sort of danger going out with silly expensive gear and actually ended up getting killed by a couple of guys in in really ratty gear but specific ganking builds and that that can feel really bad so just think before you take out that amazing gear to the red zone can you afford to lose it and are you really safe our final tip for new players to albion online today is to have multiple gear sets ready so Albion isn't like a traditional MMO where you would have your equipment and that is your equipment that you use for pretty much everything and it's yours forever. In Albion Online, if you die in a full loot PvP area, you will drop the items you're wearing and respawn naked. Therefore, it makes it a lot less painful if you organize your sets beforehand. We talked earlier about not wearing anything you can't afford to lose and really you should gauge that on the stuff you're wearing you should think can i wear 10 sets of this can i afford 10 sets of this gear now you don't need to have 10 sets in your bank ready to go but i would recommend having between three and five sets there to re-gear if you could afford to lose the set 10 times then you're probably operating at the appropriate gear level for you Having the sets ready to go has a number of benefits. One is it actually reduces the mental impact of dying. If you respawn naked and you have to sit there trawling through the auction house, buying overpriced items, arranging everything, setting the skills, it makes dying feel that little bit much worse. If the sets are already lined up in your bank and you can quickly re-gear, it doesn't feel like such a big deal that you died. It feels more like just respawning in a, in a standard deathmatch game or something where you just bang equipment, let's go. Um, the other thing is you can shop around, which means you can pick up stuff in bulk at lower prices or put in buy orders to get your gear rather than be forced to re-equip when you've just died and you have to pay whatever price they're offering. Another benefit is that it makes it really, really quick to re-gear. So, for example, if you died just outside the portal in the black zone and you were fighting with friends, it means that you can actually re-gear and get back to the fight in as little as 30 seconds. And that actually might turn the tide of a fight. Whereas had you died and not had your sets ready, you would have to go to the bank, pick it all out again, and it would take you 5 to 10 minutes to even get back to the fight, by which time it's probably finished. Anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed this 8 essential tips for beginners video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and you can leave a comment below with your thoughts and anything that you want to see in future videos. Thank you so much for watching.